Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you are all ready to wind down this week and start the day off with love. Because that's not going to be hard because I've got Tony Murphy here this morning. Welcome, Tony. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, Shanna. Thanks for the invite. Oh, my gosh. Of course. You're someone I've always loved. I didn't look back in my history books to see when we co-led that mentoring program so many moons ago. <laughs> but I think that's the first time we actually got to partner on something and it was a blast. Like, you know, when you get to work with someone who you just admire and who just has a good vibe with you and it just make makes work easy, that's how it was partnering with you. Oh, I, I can't even, uh, that, was, that was a highlight of the year working on that project with you. Wasn't that a blast? We made, I think we made a difference. So we did. And, th and that, that model that we created lives on. So yes, bravo. Yes, That's another sign of success. Yeah. And then we've had a chance to see each other a bunch over the years. Uh, when you moved to Pittsburgh, uh, my son was looking at colleges out there and we got a chance to have dinner with you. So I was so glad that he got to meet you in person. He's heard so much about you. And then the last time I saw you in person was at Minja and Danny's birthday party. Yeah, yeah, really? that was a great, great celebration of life and and love. It was a really nice, uh, nice time, and I am so happy for Ryan. Congratulations on raising uh, an amazing young man. He is something cool, and I know he'll do great in college. I wish he was going to college here in Pittsburgh. Yes, he well, we've got some other amazing young people coming your way, yeah. like Audrey and Ainsley. So good, good, good. Some of our Westchester best coming your way. <laughs> okay, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it gives us all a good reason to get together yeah. and celebrate. And and when you said to him, Ryan, you need to make a difference. You, it's we're waiting, we're depending on you. And I got chills, and I thought, oh, that's so true. So yeah, thank this, you and this encouragement. This class, this class of 2020, um, I really can't wait to see what happens with them because you know to have to go through this particular period in such an important sort of chapter change in your life. Um, it's It says a lot about who they are, the way they're sort of mustering through all of this. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be great arsenal for them to go off and do some incredible things in the world. I do too. Yeah, I really think that's true. I mean, it's, it's grit, it's resilience, it's dealing with disappointment and setback. But then like, you know, when you're down, how, how quickly do you get back up? Like, how do you that's make right. it work? And that's I think true. that's, and it's been an a, incredible opportunity to see the love from humanity, but also the creativity and how people are finding ways to make it still feel so special. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, every generation has its moment and uh, this is theirs and this is ours. We must yeah. live in this particular moment, you know? Yes, for sure. Yeah, and we should talk more about this, the moment that we're in, and I'm grateful that you're here today. So let me open us up in prayer so that we're reminded of the spirit presence here, and, um, and then we'll let the spirit guide us. Oh, well, let's start off with a deep inhale in and a long exhale out. Lord, we are so grateful for this time together. Thank you for the blessing of Tony Murphy and all the ways in which she lights up the world. Mm. We're so grateful for this opportunity to connect human to human this morning, to talk about what you intended for us, how you designed us, and how we could be more loving and supporting of each other on this journey. Yeah. Lord, we ask you to just be our guide help our hearts be wide open, help our eyes to be wide open, to see the beauty in all humans. Mm. We are so grateful for your presence and we trust in your guidance and support. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 So let's start with how you're dealing with quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, you know, so as you know very well, uh, I've got my husband here. I've got who's uh, he's been working pretty hard because he's a uh, yeah. guy and he works on networks to make sure that his mm -hmm. he has capacity. So he's up all night. As a matter of 
last night he was in and out of the bed. We got to figure out that bed arrangement because this sort of interrupted sleep is not working for me. But, you know, so I have that. Then I've got yeah. my three very small children, eight, six, oh. and four. And, uh, you know, this sister was not built for homeschooling, but, um, you know, when I can, when I can and how I can. Have you uh, created your own curriculum, Tony? No, uh-uh. No. Uh -huh. no. The okay. teachers have given me quite enough. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. But the hard part, the hard, the hard part is just trying to balance all of that. Plus, a you know, a pretty important job. You know, my team, you know, I lead sales. And so yeah. we're, we're very essential. And yeah. Well, who are in stores wearing masks and taking all the proper precautions. And, you know, every day I wake up praying for them, making sure that they're safe and hoping they turn home just the same. Mm -hmm. That's, it's been, it's been, um, it's, it's, I feel like we're getting into new sort of what they call BA new or whatever everyone's calling it now, yeah. new yeah. normal. <laughs> um, but, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever that is. As Nora's new. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that could be. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but I'm trying to, you know, just sort of manage it all. And it, certainly there are moments where I need a deep breath, a good prayer, mm -hmm. and a cocktail too. Just, yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot to take in where we where we are. Totally. Yeah. And I think in the absence of the busy, I mean, it's busy, but different busy. It's not like traveling and schedules and getting kids here and there busy. It's just uh, you know, managing your work, your team, your yeah relationship, your children, yourself, um, you know, it does give us time to be more introspective. Yeah. You know, I, um, I agree with that. You know, I think for myself, uh, I think I've always prided myself on being able to keep myself moving and mm -hmm. keep myself busy. Yeah. And, um, uh, and, and, the, and the challenge for me as an extrovert and mm -hmm. as someone who loves social engagement, you know, uh, I'm I'm entertaining the same four people every day. Yeah, part of me that feels that I've, I've been sort of mourning um, my interaction with my human interaction with people that I don't know. I love I love the curiosity of meeting people I don't know. Yeah, and know them better and finding commonality. And so to be conf to to have that just sort of stripped away. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. Yeah, that's that's a challenge. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we we're trying to do it in creative ways like this, but it's it's not the same. But it's better than not doing this. So I think you know yeah. we're all just kind of making the best out of what we've got oh, yeah. access to, and I think that's good. And you know I think in the midst of uh, this quarantine and being home and not having the same kind of uh, activity that we used to have. Um, it does cause us to deal with how we're feeling more, I think, mm -hmm. than perhaps before, because we could just get busy being busy and distract ourselves with movement and not have to deal with what's going on. And that's mm -hmm. a topic I want to talk to you more about today. You know, I, I, uh, I think you're right. And I know, I know for myself, um, I've probably meditated more now than I have ever in my entire life. Mm. Probably spent more time uh, really sort of sitting in my own spirit than I ever have in my entire life. And to your point about being busy, you know, you know, it's funny. You think about like, you know, arguments you have with people, relationships that don't work. And in, in, in a, in a non COVID environment, just being busy allows you to allows you to have distraction or have some way to um, remind yourself that, you know, I, I can wait until another day to deal with it. Mm -hmm. The space now where we have more time, more, uh, especially alone time, right? We are, we are more sort of in a cocoon than ever. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's by, d d you know, the, the, that's the sort of divine design of COVID that mm -hmm. it teaches you to be still. Yes. And to really sort of take stock of where you really are. And I think for myself, you know, coming into COVID, I had broken relationships. I had, there were issues or concerns that I've been sort of putting off mm -hmm. on my own health, things around um, 
my relationship with my husband, things around my relationship with my family, mm -hmm. um, job, my my goals, my vision for my life. Mm -hmm. I've I've been putting them off because I don't. I'm too busy. Yeah. Well, now I'm not as busy. I'm busy in a different way. Mm -hmm. and it's God's way of saying to me, I've always felt that God works in mysterious ways and, and nothing is by accident. Mm -hmm. I do feel like for me personally, this COVID environment has taught me uh, that God wants me to sit in my mess. Yeah. To really take stock of where I am and mm -hmm. to deal with it. And to uh, to 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 really internalize and ask myself and in, and introspect mm -hmm. than I ever ever do before to be get clarity in mm -hmm. some respects that um, you know I've I've had more conversation with myself now about what you know am I a good mother am I the mother I want to be mm. am I the wife I want to be right are there things that I'm missing am I the Tony I want to be yeah. Yeah, the life that God has called me to live. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the questions that are now sort of really bubbling up and, and, and really uncomfortable. Very really uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. But but there's power in sitting in it. Agreed. Yes. Right. And yeah. not avoiding it, right? Because you yeah. feel it is uncomfortable and it's vulnerable. And I think, you know, in the way that we talk about loving others like we love ourselves, you know, to love ourselves while we're going through that process and not to justify whatever we've done before, but just to say, look, I think I was doing the best that I can, mm -hmm. but I think I can do better. So yeah. what does that look like? And what what might I be willing to change? And how can I ask for God's guidance in that? I think that's mm -hmm. a really beautiful place to be, like on your knees. In yeah in the mess. I love, I love the way that you said that. Cause I think it's, it's an opportunity that we can yeah. take, not take, right. Cause we could go get busy doing other things or we could just be yeah. in it. It's always been there. It's always been there. It's just a question of whether we choose to engage it, confront it, um, find power in it. Mm -hmm. it I feel like, uh, I, I feel more connected to myself now than I ever have before because yeah. I Literally can hear God's voice to me every single day. Yeah, I'm, I'm convening with Him more frequently. Yeah, in ways than I have before. Are you doing that in any kind of a routine way, Tony, or is that just something you know, you're like I gotta be still and be quiet? Well, so I look. I will say that you know I have been taking on a few different church services mm -hmm. week and week week uh, weekend. Yeah, me too. You know, like, so for example, this church I attend here in Pittsburgh called Macedonia, they have this, this uh, service called uh, Thirsty Thursday. So instead of, you know, you know, are you thirsty for Jesus? And yeah. they do this great prayer. And so I've been trying to take advantage of the fact that we're, since we're in a virtual environment, attending right. is all across the world. I mean, I, I've been attending church in Rome and. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. I do that. Yeah, it's, like it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so I've been doing that. The other thing I'd say is that I've been, um, I've been, ha I have a few sort of social groups, and we've been mm -hmm. doing these Zoom meetings mm -hmm. to take a little pressure off the valve. To yeah, you know, That's to talk thing. about what are we, what have, what have you realized? Mm -hmm. And we all share, and another idea comes out of that. Yeah, just trying to embrace uh, the environment we're in. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the growth opportunity oh, yeah. that it can be if we allow it to be. And I love that idea of going to different worship services. We've been doing that also. Yeah. And then it occurred to me this week, um, yet another week where we're seeing the injustice that's happening around us. And I thought, you know what? The most segregated day of the week is Sunday. Like we're yeah. all separating into our respective churches. And I'm going to find some African-American congregations to join on Sundays. I want to hear, I want to hear what's on the hearts of other people and, you know, what are they praying for and how can I be a part of that community? Because I think the more we're immersing ourselves in each other's communities, the more we could love each other the way we were intended to. Yeah. You know, this, um, 
the last couple of weeks have been um I'm not I'm not I'm not going to lie that I I, I have felt um really sad on so many levels about where our um where our country is, where our people are, where our mindset is. And, you know, to have the, the, the couple of weeks that we've had as, um, as an African-American woman, as a mother of, of African-American children, a mother of a young boy, no less, a young black boy, um, to be married to a black man, to be an aunt of black nephews, um, you know, I, I, this week has been a really rough one and it's been rough because, you know, first of all, we're in the middle of this pandemic and you ask yourself, how do we even have time for this foolishness? I don't know. Pandemic is one, is one thing. And, but the second thing is I just, I, I don't know where humanity sits, mm-hmm. where humanity is. Yet in this, but in, ironically, I sit here and I say to myself, "But but God is definitely doing something, right? Yeah. That the God that I serve is active and present, and He's He's pushing me to think about myself in a different way. How can the God that I serve right now, who's helping me become a better Tony, a better a better me, mm-hmm. all be the God that's seeing this happen, all this kind of stuff? And it's been it's been hard to reconcile." Um, but yeah. what, but what I've as I've sort of taken stock of this particular week that we're in, is that I I have chosen to believe that God is at work, and I think He's pushing all of us to sit in our mess. Mm-hmm. There's the mess. There's the Shannon mess. There's the U.S. mess. There's the pandemic mess. I think I think God is talking to us in a profound way about. Mm-hmm what it means to be human, what it yes. means to care about one another and, and, and be in community. I think God is just, God is working. Mm-hmm. So I've, uh, while this week has been, you know, extraordinarily sad and um, I don't know, depressing on a lot of levels. I think, yeah. I think it's time for us to get to work. Yeah. It's time for us to get to work. Amen. And Shannon, you know, I agree. I feel like I need to say this, that, Please. that as an African-American in this country, I remember from a very young age, my parents, you know, I'm, I'm an eighties baby. I'm not even that, I'm not even that old, but I remember my parents saying, you know, this world is going to be very unfair for you. And you're going to have injustices happen to you and you just need to be prepared. You know, I remember my parents saying to my brother, don't stay out late. If you get in trouble with the police, don't say anything. We just want you to return home safely. And even to this day, you know, if if Craig goes to the grocery store or he goes to the hardware store and he hasn't come back in a couple of hours, the first thing I think about is, is he safe? And I just, it's, it's, it's sad to me because I know that I have many friends and many friends that don't look like me and they don't have to worry about those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, and that's the part that, that, um, that eats away at my spirit is yeah. I know the spirit, my nephew, my nephew, Quentin is six foot five and almost 300 pounds but he is a teddy bear. I mean, I could push him over with my finger, <laughs> but someone could see him as intimidating or terrifying. Yeah. And I don't know what I would do if, if there were four police officers laying on him, like, like they did this gentleman in, in, in Minneapolis. Yeah. So that's where my heart is. My heart is heavy. My heart is, um, we all know a George Floyd. We yeah. all know an Ahmad Aubrey. Yeah. We all know a Trayvon Martin. Mm-hmm. We all know every African American person in this country. I I highly doubt there is a single person who has never who has had who has not had to tell some 
young African American man, this is what you you could this is what you could end up being. Yeah. And that is a problem. Yes. Problem. Right. And so when we talk about God being at work and the work we need to do, you're a smart woman. You know how to make change. Like what comes to your mind, Tony? What are things that you're like, for heaven's sakes, could people start what 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 what's like when God's telling you, what do you hear? So look, I, you know, so I talked to my mom last night and my, my mom is a great voice of reason and I'm grateful because she, you know, she's lived a long life and she's seen more than I have. Her prism is much wider. Yeah. And, you know, she she reminded me last night, you know, you know, she says, Antoinette, you know, that's my real name, Antoinette. <laughs> you know, I just want to remind you that we are in a better place than when I was growing up. Yeah. We are in a better place than when my when your grandmother was growing up. You know, in my family, you know, you know, we're only four generations away from slavery. You know, we're, we're only, we're only, we're just right there. So to yeah. some degree, you know, she, you know, and she's like, look, in my lifetime, you know, my grandfather was the, was the child of a slave, a freed slave, right? So, mm -hmm. so you know, your prism is important. So what, the, the truth, the point was, we're in a better place, whether you want to believe it or not, we are in a better place because yeah. I've seen more than, than, than you have, but we have more work to do. We have extraordinary more work to do. And, and what she also said was, look, just as the blood of, of, of civil rights and, and slavery runs through your veins, unfortunately, the blood of hatred and discrimination and racism still runs through the veins of a really long and rich American history. Mm -hmm. And so therefore every generation has a new fight. It might yeah. be different. It might be morphed. It might be, uh, it might change in its in it in the way it shows up. But mm -hmm. this country didn't get here accidentally. Yeah, we here for uh, somehow and, and a certain reason. Right. For every generation has a moment. Mm -hmm. Step up and decide who we want to be. Yeah. Um. And so 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 in terms of what we can do, I'm always reminded that. You know, the civil rights movement was powerful because of people like Malcolm X and Medgar Evers and Martin Luther King and, you know, all those uh, fantastic leaders, Jesse Jackson. I could go on and on and on. Elijah Cummings. Yes, they they are the, the lifeblood of how we got to this moment on our side, the African-American side. But just along but alongside them were white Americans, freedom fighters, who got on buses, traveled from the North and all, the, all over the US to tell the story and to fight for equality and freedom. Mm -hmm. The entire history of America, whether it be civil rights, women's rights, uh, you know, gay rights, the history of this country is people who don't bear the burden of the problem deciding to step in. Yeah. Deciding that they're on the side of what's right mm -hmm. and what's expedient for them. That's the history of this country. Yeah. That's the history. Mm -hmm. And counting on what I'm when I have solace in, you know, I was I've been watching all of my, you know, my scrolls on Facebook. And mm -hmm. I see all these posts of white Americans saying enough is enough. We need to do something. We got to use our privilege. I love that. Thank yeah. you. I want to say to those folks, thank you. Because if it's just African Americans speaking on this brutality, it's not going to get anywhere. Right. I'm counting on all of us mm -hmm. brown, white, whatever. It doesn't matter what you look like, sound like. We all have to be on the side of just, we got to have more dialogue. Yes. Have more engagement, mm -hmm. tell more stories. Mm -hmm. We to hold people accountable. And by the way, accountable is not just the law. Accountable is the, the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, I would have loved for someone to step in. Yeah. Honestly, if, if, the, if the truth is that, you know, white Americans don't get shot at the rate that we do, why wouldn't someone step in on that street corner? Mm -hmm. That's a question I have. I mean, I really do. 
I do too. I mean, even in the current events of like all of those people who were video recording, I mean, they were watching a murder and like, put your phone down and help. How do we, how do, we do that? I mean, that, that is a question. I don't know the right answer, but we have, but we all have privilege. I, I do think I have privilege as a person who is, you know, doing well in, in my career. You mm -hmm. have privilege in the platform that you have. Everybody. Mm -hmm. That's engaging this morning has a privilege. Yes. The question is, how do we use our privilege to help those who don't? Yeah. It comes in every, it, it's poverty, it's racism, it's discrimination, it's it, all of those things. We all have a privilege. And the question is, what are we willing to, that's the mess I think God is asking us to sit in. Yes. Leverage this how will you leverage this, this, uh, I'm giving you time and mm -hmm. eyes to see yeah. I'm giving you time right now. I do think by the way, it's fascinating how this is erupted. Right. But, but frankly, the, I think part of the eruption of this particular incident on the heels of these other incidents, the one in Kentucky with the young yeah. lady Taylor and the one and, in and Aubrey and George, Park. but it's interesting that in this particular moment, we we are activating and it's because we have more time. Yeah. Pandemic allows you to, cause you're sitting around. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I don't think this is by accident. God is at work yeah. He's asking for us to decide how we move the work forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do introspection, do some assessing and get to work. Yeah. So I, exactly. But I'm committed it starts with today, by the way. I think, you know, look, God is right here in this particular moment. Right now. Here, right now, right here, right now. Yeah. Uh, he's here. And I think that this stewing, this, this, you know, this, 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 this sort of bloodletting, if 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 you will, this sort of metaphor of bloodletting that we're having, this shedding of blood is 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 a design is is divine sort of a it's a wake-up call. Yeah. That if we don't work at what we believe we will retreat from everything that we, all the progress that we have made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's what's at stake. More human life, more hatred, more destruction. And, you know, I embarrassingly plead ignorance here. I, you know, watched the video from this week and I just couldn't sleep. And I'm laying in bed like, this is happening. Like, how is this happening? And I made myself believe that things were getting better. And I, and I appreciate what your mother was saying, your wise mom about the progress that has been made and that there's still work to do. I think I'm in the end. There's still work to do mindset of like, I can't just rest and say, everybody's all right. Cause they're, they're not. And I love what you're calling us to do. Those of us who are hearing this deep in our hearts and saying like, it, it has to stop and we have mm -hmm. to, we got to step in. Yeah. I, I think I care about this, you know, I, I try to go to great thought leaders that, like those you mentioned and, you know, cause I first got angry and then I was sad and then I was frustrated and then I felt ignorant and you know, all of those things. And then I found this Martin Luther King quote, that I think is so helpful to me, which is that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. You know, and then I go to all over the Bible where it reminds us to love one another. And this one where it's, it's beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. You know, these reminders of, we are brothers and sisters and we've got to be a voice for those who don't have one or for those who aren't being heard. And we have to do it through love because otherwise I think we're going to perpetuate more hatred and more conflict. So how do we have productive conversations, courageous conversations, think about whose minds need to shift? How do we personalize this? Because to your point about telling stories, I think a key part of this is knowing individuals who have dealt personally with this 
type of society and this injustice. I mean, and all the different populations of people who are suffering from discrimination, who you mentioned, it's once you can identify a human in your own life who is suffering, you you now have a personal commitment to, I think, and responsibility to supporting the change, being the change. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And if, and if I could offer, you know, two very poignant things. Great. You know, the first thing I, I, I want to just call out something that I find to be a distraction. Mm -hmm. These kind of moments happen. I find people go into their corners where they'll say things like, well, my father's a police officer and he's the greatest person on earth. And, um, and, and the 99% are great. And the 1% is not, and we're focusing on the 1%. And so, you know, I don't want to discount any of the things that we're saying here. I want to be clear that yes, that it, that it can be true both and, Mm -hmm. Yes, and yeah. fantastic yeah. police officer, and there is a problem with with policing. It can both be true that yes, we we know that police officers do an amazing job in this country to care for communities, and and the majority are, but there, but but also we can also acknowledge that we have more work to do. That that you can that the the, the the statements are both true. That I can be patriotic and take a knee like Colin Kaepernick, okay? Mm -hmm. I think that we, we have to start to listen more and really step into the prism or the lens by which the other is, is, is engaging. We yes. need to do that because if we don't do that, then we're not moving the, the work forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're not really understanding. I mean, that is what empathy is, right? When you're looking at things through the lens of the person with whom you're empathizing and how do you understand their world, which is why I wanna go to different churches on Sunday mm -hmm. this weekend, because I wanna learn, I wanna be a part of the communities so that I I get it, I feel it, I'm a member, you know, because you take care of your own, you know? That's right. And it's not just about, you know, Tony is not just a member of the black community. You know, Tony can represent people that looks different from her every single day. My yeah. job every single day is to make the people around me better and make them feel more whole and more connected right. and, yeah. to, and to speak on behalf of what they are experiencing. And mm -hmm. that is how we use our privilege for good. That's right. That's right. It's leadership. Yeah. Yeah. It right? is. Leadership. It's, it's love. I mean, really, I think it all, it all comes down to love. Yes, it does. God is love at the God. end. Of the day, God is love. And if, and if we allow love to just God be our guidepost, so much is different. Mm -hmm. so much is different. So you much know, is different. And so much is possible yeah. then. So much is possible. And it takes less energy. Yeah. To, right. To Yes. You yes. Know, it really yes. Does. And, you know, I think that's, I mean, I think that's fundamentally how we've been created. So, you know, in pandemic prayer on Mondays, we talk about love versus fear and that fight we do every day. And one of the resources we're using is a book called Return to Love. And Marion Williamson teaches that we're born love and we learn fear. Yes. And so return to that. And like, to your point, it's just easier because it's, it's just easier. Yeah. You know, that's right. It, it, it both. Yeah, we 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 have an opportunity. We really do. Right now, we have an opportunity to have conversations, to educate one another. Yeah. Uh, I, I always, by the way, whenever these kind of things happen, no matter what, whether it's police brutality or, you know, black men dying or even in other countries, even this pandemic, I've taken mm -hmm. every single day to read one story of a person who's died from this pandemic because that's where, that's where love really is, is you can amplify love, acknowledging mm -hmm. us as people, as human beings, yeah. take the yeah. time to understand their story. If you don't, if you've never engaged in this conversation around, uh, you know, what it's like to be an African-American male in this country, there's a lot of literature right now, new ideas, poems mm -hmm. 
little boys read, little black boys reading their experiences. Take mm -hmm. to do that. That's where love, love is in finding understanding. Love yeah. is in seeking the other, seeking to understand their experiences. And so that's why every day I read a, someone's story. I try mm -hmm. to read one person for some, whatever, whatever happens across the world. I want to read that person's story. When they tell me someone died, I want to understand what happened to them. Who were they? How did they live? What value did they bring? Yeah. Because yeah. that makes me a better person for the next person who will, we will lose for some pandemic or disease or incident. It mm -hmm. makes me much more open and aware and conscious yeah. of, uh, of, of, of my own privilege, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear that loud and clear. And I think it personalizes it back to that. You know, it, it's not just like a stat or a number. It's a human who had a, a life, and family and friends and gifts and talents and a legacy and values and fears and all the other th things that humans have. And for you to take the time, I love that practice. I'm gonna take a page out of that book. Cause I think it's, you know, and then it, it sits in your heart and then you know who to pray for. Cause you know, I pray more broadly about people who are suffering from COVID-19 who are yeah. past families yeah. who are suffering all of those losses. But I love your idea of like, learn about one person a day. And by the way, and, and look, and it's on both sides because, you know, I am going to read about this gentleman that put his foot on this man's neck. Mm-hmm. I want to understand how he got here. I want to understand it because yeah. man, I got to reach, we got to reach these people. Yeah. We got to fix this because yeah. we got to fix it just in the conversations that we're all having. Well, people who are understanding there's yeah. a population that, that may not see me as human. There's a population of people who may not want to hear what I have to say because I I'm a certain political affiliation. I got to know them. That's part of the problem in our country right now. We're not finding ways to yeah. connect with each other mm -hmm. and find common ground. So we we got we just have so much work to do. And God, I think um, I'm so grateful for this conversation because, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, this is where God is calling. He's calling us up. Yeah, pulling us higher. Yeah, yes, he's pulling us higher. Yes, and it's up to us to decide what we do from here. Agreed. And I think seeking out people who have a different point of view or have different life experiences and different beliefs and not to try to pitch your beliefs and change them, yeah. but to learn from each other, to have a productive dialogue and learn and, and be willing to be vulnerable and unknowing and imperfect and, you know, misinformed or whatever. I mean, I think that's part of it too, is that you know, we don't, oh, we don't know everything and mm -hmm. how, how could we? And especially if all we do is surround ourselves with people who think like us and believe like us, yes. you know, how are we ever going to grow? I'm not in the business of changing minds. I'm in the business of opening minds. Yes. Difference. That's the difference. I can, I, I, I it, yes. And yes, yes. And both can be true. Yes. Both can be true. And, yes. and that's, that's the most powerful tool that's in our arsenal to find ways to move us all forward mm -hmm. and I'm that we will engage in this this work yep yep multiply yeah partner up and multiply yeah something that you said years ago uh there was an event that we were at called the power of 200 yeah. just 200 top women leaders and you stood up and i don't know if you remember this but you stood up and you talked about your philosophy of we grow people. Mm. Could you share a little bit about that and where that came from? Yeah. So, um, you know, originally I'm from Dallas, Texas, and my family is deeply entrenched at a church called the Concord Church. My father, uh, before he passed away, was a deacon at that church. And my uncles are all deacons there and ushers and, you know, on every ministry you can think of, my family basically is like, you know, you know, we all are part of that church. And I'll never forget um, when I first started going there, I would go there when, you know, in my adulthood, I would go and visit my father for Easter. Or, and I love how they have a mantra where they say, we grow people. They have everybody stand up and they say, we grow people. And I remember this one Sunday, they said it, they kept saying it, they kept saying mm -hmm. it, 
kept saying it, people got louder and louder. And by the time it was over, it was a ruckus. You couldn't even calm everybody down. Yeah. Deciding that I was quaking. Yeah, it was it was a it was an earth shaking moment. Yeah. We people, we grow people. And that's what they believe that they're there to do is to grow people. That we that that you know that we can make this world a better place. It's we're gonna we're gonna leave the world better than we found it. We're gonna grow people. That's mm -hmm. how the world is through people. Yeah. It, it it's it's uh it shaped uh it it has shaped my foundation in so many ways. Yeah. Uh, so anyway. Yes, thank you. I think that's a good mantra for us as we as we close this conversation. Tony, would you mind closing us in prayer? I would love to. Okay. All right. Father God, we come before you humble, thankful, grateful, full of love, full of appreciation. Just 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 sitting in our mess. Because that is what you have called us to do. Father, we thank you for this moment. You, the Bible says that we're two or three are gathered in your name. You are with us. And I believe this morning you have been more than with us. And I thank you for my friend Shannon. I want to thank you for putting on her heart this platform, this beautiful pandemic prayer that allows people of your faith to come together and worship and and gather and, and, and think and contemplate that be that you want us to convene, although we can't be together physically, that even in this virtual setting, that you would be lifted up. And God, we know that in these particular moments, this pandemic has taught us that no matter how busy you are, we are still your children. We are still the people you have called us to be. That, that you have work for us to do. And so we say thank you first for allowing us to slow down, allowing us to, thank you for giving us eyes to see, allowing us to convene and experiencing each other in different and probably more profound ways than ever before. That we're no longer ships in the night, that we have to be intentional in convening with you. Because that in itself is what God you represent, you represent love, you represent compassion, you represent us connecting. That's what you call us to do. That's what it means to be human. And so God, on this day, we've had this conversation. We've talked about the mess that our country sits in. We know that on this call right now, there are people suffering and, and challenged by whether it be COVID-19 or depression or sadness. It could be a loss of a job. It could be just, just trying to find a new normal. That's the, there are individual messes that each of us is dealing with. And God, we know that that exists right now. And you know what's on their hearts. I'm asking you right now to hear the prayers of your people in their individual journeys as we as we move forward. But I also ask that you God that you you recognize and you and you help us heal our country, heal our land. This situation in Minneapolis and Kentucky and Georgia, all over the US, all over the world. Discrimination against Asians, discrimination against people of color. People feeling shut in or or downtrodden this this red and blue, Lord, we just ask that right now that you, you make a way out of no way. Because we, only know, we know only you can do it. Only you alone can do this. But, but as the Bible says, you know, you call us to take up our armor, that we are soldiers in this fight. So God, I ask that you, you, you take every person that is in this moment right now, that's experiencing this worship right now, and you give us eyes to see, you give us tools to move forward. You give us the ability to have powerful dialogue, to create the environment we seek. Because we know that you're powerful beyond measure. Nothing in this world is by accident. It is by your, your divine design, your divine covenant, and your ability to get us to be a better people. We know we will arrive. We will arrive out of all of this more more beautiful, more whole, and more, and most importantly, 
more connected to you and your purpose and your calling on our lives. So for that, I just say thank you. I just say thank you. Thank you for allowing me to sit in my mess. Thank you for allowing us to sit in our collective mess. And, and now the work begins and we just ask that you will give us the tools. And when we And when we do arrive, we will be careful to give you all the power and the glory for it all belongs to you. In Jesus' most powerful name we pray, amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, well, take that. Take that deep into your heart, everybody. We're all in this together. All right, we'll see you on Monday and hope everybody has a great weekend. Be well. Bye. I love you, Tony. Love you too. Love you too.